Yeah, it's going to be suggested. It's going to be suggested that um, we've lost a certain direction in the music. Well, it's, uh, you know, all that. I mean, it, you know. How do you advise that? Well, you know. <laughs> you don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Mm. I don't think so, you know. I mean, you know, when you see the band. thing is, I mean, you know, the real truth is you finish with one band and you start with a new band and uh, it takes time, you know. I mean, you can't, like I said, <laughs> this man's on BBC. <laughs> yeah. <all right>. yeah. <laughs> you know, they do a lot of anything anyway, man, you know. It, it, it ends up yeah. by, you know. Let me out the contract if you want to know the truth. The other three bits, you know, I mean, it's not them, it's actually Alan Klein, you know, who's persuading them not to let me out. And it's a it's a weird scene, all he'll that stuff, it. you know. He'll get but uh, it. it'll all he come out right it. in the end, it'll be okay. He will get it. So you feel vaguely anti them until that's sorted out? Do you think they could sort it out for you or help? I don't know, you know. On a purely personal level, I would just like to meet them. No. Particularly. <laughs> you so know, they're okay, okay, they're okay, but I've got a new band now, you know, I'm yeah. more interested in that, you know, it's just, uh, it's just the way it is, you know. What about the musical level and what they've all been doing? Would you listen to what that do you think a lot? Yeah, Johnson's not a lot, you know. What do you think of uh, John's last album? Yeah, yeah. It's good, you know, I mean, as long as it's what he wants to do, you know, it's, it's fine, you know. It's, you, you, you don't share his sort of social, political concerns. Actually do, you know. But you do it your own way. Uh, yeah. Right, you I'm begun to say a right. to yeah. Do you think his action is effective? Do you think, uh, yeah, it's not ineffective. It's not ineffective, you know. He's, you know. I mean, I don't, I don't think there's that much wrong with what he says, you know. It's, it's fair enough. I mean, you come to check it out, you know, and a lot of what he says, you know, is pretty is right. You know. No, because... We invited on the Bangladesh really? concert. Yeah, but it's like, don't bother me. Yes, I was invited on it, yes. But um, yeah, for me, I mean, it's it's a long story, all that, because, uh, you know, the thing is, like I say, I mean, for me, the only thing is, if I'd gone there, I know for certain, I may be crazy to think it, but I know for certain that uh, it would have been played up as, hey, the Beatles are back together again. You know, yeah. it may have only been for one night, but you know, the whole th the whole thing would have been perpetuated. You know, when in fact the truth is, it, it's not. It's ended. It is definitely ended. You know, and uh, like I say, you know, you start sort of going playing again. I mean, we, the man from the record company said, "Will you play just once a year, lads, like a sort of memorial tribute?" You know. Well, I'm not going to get into that. You know, because I'm not dead yet. You know, you can get into all that when I'm dead. You know, if you want to, but uh, it's no good to me now. Thank you very much, Paul. Well, it's been nice talking to you here live from Chateau Vallon and uh, to give all our regards to the listeners. And, uh, as far as the listeners are concerned... Love to all the see British you people. May you not go in the common market. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> see you soon. Paul McCartney, all go this money. Political. Mm. Blimey, you shouldn't go political, be an entertainer. Mm. I know, but the thing is, you know, also, uh, I'm a person as well as an entertainer, you know. And uh, just over that thing, you know, I mean, it just was something I felt and still feel, you know. I mean, I don't, I don't particularly offer any solutions to how to do it, you know, but it just looks wrong to me, you know, and I just got together a little song about it. I understand uh, why the people who thought it was a wrong thing to do thought it was wrong, but uh, I don't. I think it was right, you know, I think it's a good thing, you know. We heard it on Spanish radio, it was number one in Spain, because they don't know anything about the lyrics or anything. It's a good fascist nation. <laughs> they just go wild over it, you know. Well, you know. On another tack, uh, the other layman thing that people always say is, do you meet the others at all, ever, you know? Uh, I do occasionally and stuff, but uh, I don't It's always made out to be great enemies. No, we're not great enemies at all. I mean, there's none of that. You know, we sort of meet occasionally from time to time. But uh, we don't 
uh, work together anymore, you know. So, I mean, it, it is, it's, it's rather like, you know, if, uh, if you're working on one newspaper and you move to another newspaper, well, they might have been your greatest buddies ever on that newspaper, but if they still work there and you don't, uh, there just isn't the opportunity to see them, you know, you might. But you know what I mean, someone goes around saying, we hate everyone on the daily, mm. whatever. Mm. And people, it's like every true. partnership that breaks up, people always analysing, Lennon wrote that, in fact, I think one paper came out with that list. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, he did. I mean, it's pretty much true. There was only a couple of ones he didn't, you know. I mean, you can do that with uh, John and my stuff, you know, because it, it does split up like that. There is a lot of it that he wrote. There's a lot of it that just I wrote. And then there's a certain amount that we wrote together. You know? Which was the best one you think that you wrote? <clears throat> Yesterday, I think, you know. Mm. Just because, to me, it's, it's a complete song. You know, not because it's sort of a big hit or anything. It's just, it's one of those I just woke up one morning humming. Like, uh, you know, I don't know if you know that, but a lot of people dream complete symphonies when they wake up and they can't write them down. You know, Linda had that the other night. She, you know, all through her dreams, she's hearing this fantastic song. You know, you sometimes do that. I don't know if any, you know, just people do. But I mean, well, that was one of those with me, you know. But I remembered it when I woke up and sort of cut it together and wrote it, and it, that's, you know, it's one of the ones I think works. Do you feel pressure on you now at all? But people are saying, ah, when's he going to come up with something? Yeah, you know, but I mean, my only way of dealing with that is just to sort of ignore it. There's no other way. It's no good just sitting around feeling the pressure and just letting it press you down kind of thing. I mean, there are those kind of pressures. You know, I think those kind of presses actually sort of affect everyone, you know. But with me, it's just more pinpointed on certain subjects, you know. But I mean, you know, everyone gets bags under their eyes eventually, you know. It, you know what I mean? It gets to everyone eventually, kind of thing. But, uh, yes, John? Can you tell me a bit about the bus, actually? Yeah, well, it mainly came about, we were on holiday, you know, we were, and we were trying to sort of get healthy before a tour. <laughs> You know, like a lot of people do, because you think, oh, God, it's really going to take it out of you, you know, slog, slog. But we suddenly thought, well, wait a minute, you know, if we're going to be in Europe in the summer, you know, going to places like, you know, like, you know south of France, you know, it's just silly to just be in some little box all day gasping for air. And stuff. So we came with this idea to have a, a upper deck, uh, what's it called, open... What are they called? Open deck, like oh. they have in Brighton. Yeah, open deck, you know, upper deck kind of thing. Um, we've got some mattresses up there, you know, so we can just cruise along. Fantastic. It's just great, just lie around, you know, and just get the sun, you see. Keep healthy, man, on tour. Can't be bad. Yeah, you did universities, but you didn't actually oh, no. come anywhere people could... Uh, oh, we're really but... looking forward to that one. When, when will you do that? Well, you know, as soon as it turns up, I don't know, really. Next year, hopefully. And Hamburg was like sort of a way to play it all in, you know, and... Uh, Working like eight hours a day there, you know, was it's great for a band. You know, it really works you, and you get to know each other, and it, it's really great. You know, you can if something goes wrong on a show, kind of thing, you can just no, 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 no. Yeah, I do them either on my own or with Linda or with she's actually written one we did tonight on our own. That was actually to prove a point to uh, Sir Lou Grade when we were having frictious times with him. Because he was saying she, she she couldn't write. Anyway, that's all over with the Seaside Woman. I, uh, I sat her down and said, OK, look, you know, they don't believe you can write. You better write a song. You know, because they were saying, you know, they, I mean, did, I don't know, they were suing us for a million dollars in New York and a million pounds, actually a million pounds in New York and in Britain simultaneously because they thought I was cheating. What kind of the joint ones? Yeah, yeah. I was saying, I was so saying, we well, uh, finish with the Beatles, or finish with John as a collaborator, and I'd like to have Linda now, if you don't mind. And they said, I'm afraid we do, bang, bang, and a couple of lawsuits came out. You played several <laughs> tunes tonight from your next album. Yeah. When will that be out? I uh, don't know really, we've we've recorded about half of it now and we'll finish it off uh, in winter sometime, so hopefully at the end of the year, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> ho, 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 he says, yeah. 
Here we are, folks. Here we are, folks. This, this is indeed. We keep being blinded by flashes. Yes, you're not the only one. Yeah. Um, do you say? Do you have feelings now that it's ten years since the great event? If which I can great, ask the sixty-four thousand dollar question. Which great event? Of well, the Beatles in the charts. Does that it's mean anything years? anymore? No, the Beatles were in the charts less than ten years ago, were they? No, it was ten years. The the Beatles oh first were in the charts. Well, that's wonderful. You know, that's good. I mean, you know. What do you mean? Well, I'm wondering, that. do you still have any feelings for those days or not? No. Of course, yes. I mean, I have feelings for my school days, you know. I, I like uh, many things, you know, school days, uh, Beatles days, it's great, you know. I dug it. I loved it, you know, but uh, it doesn't bother me, it's over. You've got to move on in life, Michael, you know. You've got to keep rolling on, you know, you can't just stop. Will you take this band to America? Yes, hopefully, yeah. It might take me, actually. Because <laughs> I was in America recently, everybody asked about Paul McCartney. Oh, <laughs> wonderful. What did they ask? Well, uh, are you dead? <laughs> yes, well, <coughs> I can definitely deny that rumour. Here and now. Are you, uh, do you write a lot together now, Linda? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, seaside woman, I think. Recalling that. Yes, scene. no, Linda wrote that on her own. That's uh, she's written that one completely. On which was a which songs. was a reggae number. Yeah, I love reggae. My favourite. Where did you first hear reggae? Um, I just got we just got some um, reggae albums, <laughs> and then we went to Jamaica and fantastic, because they've just got singles down there. It's like. The 50s, you know, it's just fantastic music. And all the kids, you know, it's so loose down there. And all the kids, they blast it like in Montego Bay. Every corner they're playing reggae. It's great. I love it. Do you write together much? Yes, a bit, you know, on our own or together or whatever. Yeah. Michael. Have you finished this next album that you kept really mentioning in the broken French? No. Because, I mean, you may not believe it, but I mean, we're really getting off on kind of things, daft things, like Carolina Moon, the kind of thing that you only sing when you're really drunk in the back. Carolina Moon. But I mean, you know, if you sort of mean those ones, they can really be, like, heart-rending, you know. Just, I mean, you can really... It's amazing. I mean, I'm not saying we're going to... Ray Davis it. does this with uh, Mr. Wonderful, he sings, and all these sort of... Does he? That's what I mean. I love all that stuff. I mean, you know, I don't... I don't... You know, I don't hate anything that's gone just because it's gone. In fact, it tends to be the opposite with me. You know, I get... You know, I, I dig it. You know, I love it. to be an old nostalgic. I always have been, you know. I mean, I, I am pretty, like, nostalgic, you know, like I say. You know. I think most people are, you know. I think, like, in fact, when you get down to it, say, you know, you get a dr you get a party where everyone's drunk. And, I mean, like a, uh, like a New Year party kind of thing in Liverpool. You get a New Year party with old families reunited. And uh, you'll get some fantastic things. I mean, I, we had one this year. We got my Uncle Joe there. And he's got his... Uh, son-in-law, and they're standing, you know, arms and shoulders, you know, just fabulous, you know, everyone just right in there, you know, I like all that stuff, you know, I'm, you know, it's easy to sort of say, well, you know, it's not, you know, it's old, isn't it, mm. but uh, I like what it does, you know, I, I like all that stuff. But would you ever do an old Beatle number like this? Maybe, maybe, I don't know. The Beatles thing is a bit close for me to do Beatles numbers at the moment, you know. Yeah. I don't feel like it. But, um... Because the public sing them very much. Yes. I mean, they right, love yeah. those. It's nostalgia in well, a way. I mean, we, were just on holiday. we were just on holiday recently, and, I mean, we were, you know, I was rediscovering yesterday. I mean, I've never played that for years, you know. I was just playing it on a little acoustic and stuff, and a few little things, you know. And I love them, you know. Which is, the, which is the Beatle project that gives you the fondest memories, do you think? Oh, I don't know, you know. Uh, it's, it's difficult, you can't sort of get into all that stuff, you know. I mean, you know, the Beatles, I, I enjoyed it all, you know. It was a fantastic thing while it lasted, you know. It was great what we'd done, wasn't it? You too. You know, it was fantastic, you know. But, I mean, for me, you know, I don't like the idea of just, you know, having been in the World Cup and you all stick around living on your laurels forever. It's because you won the World Cup four years ago or whatever, you know. I like to. I like football, kind of thing. You know the analogy. I like to keep trucking. You know, I like the idea of being in a band and working in 
Well, you've got a hit now. Thank you. But I mean, it, you, you could be criticised slightly for the hit, couldn't you? I mean, we're, we're saying, talking uh, about Mary Had a Little Lamb. Yeah. Yeah, you can be criticised for anything, you know. I mean, I heard some people saying it's a sellout after give Ireland back to the Irish. It isn't. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it's just I, uh, my, one of my daughters is called Mary, you know, and I just happened to be singing a song, and because her name came in it, she perks up her ears, you know. So I happened to and write a song like that. No, she sings on it. Talking mm. to but it's, you know, I mean, I, I don't really get into it that heavy, you know. I mean, I don't, I don't. Analyze the stuff that much, to tell you the truth. You know, I just and songs to Also, me. by layman, you were criticised over Give Ireland Back to the Irish. Well, I say, you know, you, you talk to most people. Yeah. Talk to most people, and they say, oh, touring, oh, it kills you, you know, hate touring and stuff. But I think, you know, if you do it right, yeah, it doesn't have to be that. Night. Yeah, you know, we'll play um, theatres. You know. Oh, nice, nice, yeah, oh, nice big concerts. Yeah. At what sort of price level? Because the Stones went out with a pound top in England. Well, I don't know, you know. I mean, you know, I don't go into all that, you know. I'd like it just so... I mean, the only... The, the, the price thing, the, the only example I have really, really affected me ever was uh, with the Beatles we played in Barcelona once at a Plaza del Toros. Bouldering. And um, all the real fans were outside. You know, because in Spain, like, they're pretty poor. Mm. And all the people inside, the audience, were all like the knobs, you know, all sort of the people who didn't dig it, you know, really. The people who didn't actually like rock. So, I mean, for me, you know, I, that's the kind of thing I like to watch, you know, so that enough people can get in who are actually just, you know, people. You don't, you don't feel it has to be an economically viable band. It doesn't have to play this way. Really. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. But it doesn't have to make massive profits, you know. I mean, we just have to... Is for, I want to make a profit. I don't want to lose ever on, the, on those because that doesn't. I don't like the idea of that. You, know, you can't expect much uh, on this sort of thing at the moment. The French thing. Well, I don't mind. You know, I don't mind. You know, <clears throat> for me, you know, I, I don't mind. I don't want to lose. We'll make some money. You know, but for me, you know, it's just. Uh, it's, it's a job. You know. I like being in work. You know, I like being. I mean, you know, for me, like I can see really what it's like to get redundant. You know, I know exactly what that feels like you know, for, like, the UCS man or whatever. You know, start fighting for your job kind of thing. And I can appreciate that. You, know. you worried about but money? Cynical people might say that you couldn't appreciate that because you've got quite a lot of money in the bank. I don't see what that has to do with it, you know. I mean, uh, you know, you can have a lot of money, but you can still want to work. You know, for me, it's just uh, I don't want, you know, at this point in my life just to not have a job. I like the idea of like working at something I like to work at. You know. Yeah, I do, you know. I mean, I've done a bit of that. You know, I mean, for about five years now. You know, I've done plenty of that. But uh, say, so, you know, I like to get out and do it. You know, it's where it's at. Yes. Well, maybe you know. I don't mind. <laughs> no. No. Uh, I don't mind. It doesn't bother me that you know. Um, you know. I mean, I can see how that can get to you. You know, where you sort of think, you know. Yeah, well, that's that's true. You know, the, yeah, the handout tonight said, you know, this is the first Beatle appearance in Europe since 1966. Yeah. Oh, well, you know, yeah. It's fair enough. All that stuff. You know. I mean, you know, I don't think of it like that. You know, for me, I'm just uh, some fellow who wants to work. You know, I like playing. You know? I don't find that gets in the way, that sort of, you know, that's a price Yeah, it does a bit, it does a bit, I mean, especially like, you know, when people have got yeah. microphones all yeah. pointing at you and say, you know, I mean, yeah, they're very sound right, what about it, you know? But I well, think this may happen, it? yeah, but I think now you work, that may quiet down. It will, down. it will, you know, that's the, that's the idea, you know, that's the idea. I mean, yeah, I'm sure uh, in time, you know, people will just appreciate that it's just a new band, you know, it's just a band, you either like it or you don't, you know. And we're working so that people will like it.
I mean, you know, all the other members of the band, you know, have done similar things. You know, Denny was in the Moody's mm. and did a lot of that, and uh, Henry was in the Grease Band. And so we've, we've all done it, you know. But we all like the idea now of just getting together a whole new thing, you know. No reason why we shouldn't. Right, Giorgio? It's no use doing what people tell you to do or what people think you ought to do. You just got to do what you feel like at the time, you know. So anything could happen, you know. What besides Wings would you do? The Rupert's... Uh, the Rupert's yeah, I don't know, you know. don't know yet. You know. Uh, Rupert is a thing I'd like to do, you know. I'd like to... It always seems... Uh, they find I'd like to make a film in. with, with uh, you know, an animated film. You know, like Disney. Because I like all those, you know, the old Disney stuff. It's just class, you know. Good, good films. And I'd like to do a similar kind of thing with Rupert. Now it comes to my involvement with uh, having kids. And you read Rupert to them and you start to think, oh, it's goodness. And I just, you know, that's, that's what happened to me. You know, I was just happened to be reading it one night to Heather. And uh, I started to dig it. Do you ever feel you've been made, because you were the almost the spokesman of the Beatles, you were the scapegoat in the end, really? Yeah, you know, I don't sort of, you know, I mean, whatever went down, you know, went down and stuff, and it wasn't sort of a pleasant end or anything, but maybe it couldn't have been a pleasant end, you know. But uh, it doesn't bother me now, you know, I mean, it's just, I say, you know, it's just whatever went down, you know. Uh, like, for me, you know, there's no point in just uh, sitting around, well, that went down and that's the end, chaps, well, see you, you know. You know I don't like that, you know, I just like to see you. But you were the, the spokesman and very pleasant to everybody always. And uh, and then suddenly, like everything in the media, it turned against you because you'd been pleasant to them. Yeah. Well, Did you feel yeah. that? Yeah. Yes, Michael. Yes, I did. This is it? a long wait trying to pull you out, you see. But you it's true, though, that you always, you, you, you were always the spokesman, unofficially, and probably because other people pushed you up as a spokesman, but you didn't seize upon it, and therefore it turned on you in the end. Well, you know, I mean, you know, I say, you know, it didn't turn that much, you know, I mean, I'm still alive and kicking, you know, and still doing stuff, you know. I mean, Say, you know, I mean, you can't go through your life and everything be rosy all the time. You know, you've got to have your ups and downs, and that was one of the downs, you know. But I don't intend to stay down, you know, baby. <laughs> no, you were aware that that happened, were you? Yeah. yeah it would be, I would have been sick if I wasn't. I think the first question I'd ask you, uh, out, out here in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> is why did you start here? Oh, uh, well, just to say. Chateau Volant, well, actually, we wanted to start a, sort of quite a smallish place to play in, you see. So this is quite a small, out-of-the-way place, but still get a, quite a reasonable audience. That's the truth, Michael. You sound a bit hoarse after your performance tonight, <laughs> <laughs> I am, just a touch. Pourquoi vous avez Come on. Autograph, yes. Stuff, yes, he wants an autograph, I think. Ah, oui. Yeah. Oui. Yeah. Two pieces of papier? No, pas de papier. <laughs> Vous faites papier. Come on, Pour moi. Hey, darling. Ah, ici, papier. <laughs> you see that? Command of the language. Yes, I thought Prussian's chanson meant Prussian song, actually, <laughs> from at the back. <laughs> Someone told me uh, it meant the next one. I never took French, you see. Linda, did you feel very nervous before tonight? First half, second half, had a great time. I was nervous first half, definitely. Definitely. But, uh, definitely. We had no sound check, no oh, rehearsal, no nothing. Yet. We had to go it's on cold, you know. So I had to warm up a bit. Yeah. 
We were very hot the second half. Do you find it a great strain working, you know, with someone like Paul? I know it's your husband, but... Easy. Really, I find it very easy. Totally, you know, I'm just still learning. But um, it's, it's fun, it's like life, you know, it's just another thing in life. Yeah, she does get very nervous, of course, you know, but she's getting better all the time, as they say in the song. The uh, Melody Maker this week had a very hard headline saying that uh, Wings snub at England. No, it's crazy, that's crazy Mr Charlesworth who wrote it, who's a nice chap sometimes, but is a little bit crazy. Someone, you know, you know how they are at the papers, don't you, Michael? Now, what about, will you will you be touring in England? Yes, uh, openly? I mean, the reason we didn't do, we're not playing in Britain is because we're playing in France. That's the only reason. We happen to be doing a tour of uh, Europe. All right, we did Giorgio. One, one for we army. Did okay. One English. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've done a little thing around the universities in England, and we're going to play in England. But uh, at the moment, we're doing a European thing to sort of play the band in. It's a very new band, you know. And if you go and play sort of Britain or America with a very new band, you're really on the spot. You know, you've got to be red hot. And uh, it takes a little time for a band to get red hot. Yeah. You know, it's a question of, so it's almost like living together for a little while, bouncing off each other and stuff. You know, this is what we're learning to do on this tour at the expense, I suppose, of the, of the Europeans. But we did Britain once.